You know, I decided all the men I'd been working for hadn't gotten it done, so I needed to run myself. <laughs> There is so much history in these Capitol hallways. The doorways and offices are marked by towering figures who ran Congress, Lyndon Johnson, Mike Mansfield, Strom Thurmond. Women may not have rooms named for them yet, but they're making their mark. You were for Jimmy Carter in 1976, Gary Hart in 1984. How many campaigns did you run before you ran yourself? Four. You ran four campaigns. Mm -hmm. I learned a lot. I learned a lot about running a campaign, about what it takes, about how hard it is. And it's harder when you're the candidate. Now this is what makes New Hampshire special. You were the first woman in American history to be elected both governor and U.S. senator. I think it speaks to how smart the New Hampshire voters <laughs> are, you know? The first time you ran for the U.S. Senate, after you'd already been governor for three terms, you lost. I did, in 2002. That must have been humbling. I mean, you were a successful, long-serving governor. It was, and it also taught me that you can't always control the outcome of an election. You can do what you think is everything right, and you still may not win. We came so very close. Victory was not denied us for a lack of trying. Getting young women interested in politics is clearly very important to her. I'm actually running for student body president right now. Ah, oh, good. And so these are kind of my campaign team. <laughs> That's very good. Tell me if you agree with this, that women tend to need to be asked to run. And guys just think that they should. When I had a group of undergraduate students in the room, I would say to them, how many of you want to run for office someday? And almost every male hand in the room would go up and very few of the young women. Yeah. I worked for your campaign in 2014, actually. A friend used to always tell me that women run for office because they want to accomplish something. They want to see a change in the hospital. They want to see something happen in schools. You know, and, and I do think there's a lot of and truth in that. And men run for office because they want to be in office. Yes. <laughs> This was the famous Senate subway, or at least one of them. Yes. It makes it a lot easier around here. <laughs> it does. On one of the most important committees in the Senate, Foreign Relations, it is still a man's world. 21 senators and Shaheen is the only woman. Do you feel a responsibility being the only woman on this committee to try to bring a female sensibility to all these dudes? <laughs> Well, it's not so much feeling of responsibility, but women make up 51% of our population, but 70% of those in poverty are women and children, women and girls. Two thirds of those who aren't in school are girls. There is an important perspective that we need to have as we're thinking about our foreign policy around the world. Fun fact, she can trace her lineage back to a notable woman in history. Can you confirm for me that you are a direct descendant of Pocahontas? I can, and I actually have the family tree to show that. Kind of ironic since President Trump tries to belittle Shaheen's colleague Elizabeth Warren by calling her Pocahontas because Warren once claimed Native American heritage. And Massachusetts is represented by Pocahontas, right? Pocahontas. Have you thought about bringing this to the president? No. <laughs> Have you told Elizabeth Warren? It's kind of a sensitive topic, so probably not. Elizabeth Warren and Jean Shaheen are two of 21 women now in the Senate. When I first started covering the Senate in 1998, there were only nine. We have all really benefited from the efforts of Kay Bailey Hutchinson and Barbara Mikulski because they started this dinner club where they got the women in the Senate together um, on a regular basis, Republicans and Democrats, to get to know each other. And you have come up with bipartisan legislation as a result of? We have. In fact, I think the best example during my time here has been the Violence Against Women Act. When we finally got all of the women senators on as co-sponsors, that's when the legislation moved. If we continued at the same rate that we had been um, electing women to Congress, it will take us 100 years to reach parity. So I'm not willing to wait that long. <laughs> We need to get young people excited about politics. Part of my message is trying to make sure that doors are open for women. Back home in New Hampshire, she engages and encourages those young people herself. We have 
literally thousands of positions in this country at the local and county levels that go unfilled because people won't run for them. And it's a great way to learn. So that's my best advice. Her first run was for state senate as a 43-year-old mother of three. Now she has seven grandchildren who call her Govy. When I was governor when I, my first grandchild Ellie. was born, Ellie, um, who is now 17. Yeah. My daughters decided that Govy was something better to call me, and it stuck. For me, getting young people engaged in politics and public service is really one of the most fun things that I get to do. Democracy only works as well as those who participate, and if, if young people are turned off, then it's not going to be good for the next generation. Keep up the good work, Senator. Thanks very much. Yeah, thank you very much.